Okay, question three. This is a little bit of data handling, so it's one of those things where we need to remember our definitions, right? And I'll remind you of those as we work. So it says, a group of students at a nursing college wrote two st tests for the same course. Table A shows the test scores as percentages of these students. So we have all these students, we have their test scores, there's test one, there's test two. And it says here, and this is important, right? A student who scores 85% or more, right? Is awarded a distinction so at our school level right 80 percent and above is the distinction but here it's different they've defined it differently and we need to be cognizant of that or remember that because they're probably going to ask us a question with regard to that okay so just be careful when when you think about these things so it says use the table and answer the questions that follow so firstly it says explain giving a reason whether the above data is discrete or continuous so remember continuous means it can take any value, including any decimal value, in a range. Discrete means it can only be specific numbers, right? And generally, those are whole numbers. With percentages, right, we would think of this as being discrete because these are all whole numbers, right? You don't say, I got 90.2%. You don't really say that, right? You say, I got 90%. That's how it works. So I'm going to say here, discrete, okay? So it just says, explain, right? So you can't just say, like, I'm just going to leave it, right? You have to say, giving a reason whether the above data is discrete or continuous. So importantly, question three, 3.1.1, I'm going to say discrete, right? And I'm going to say that percentages run from 0 to 100, okay? And are expressed, oh my, spelling, <laughs> expressed as whole numbers, okay? And that's enough to give me all my marks here. Okay, so there's always a question like this, right? Guaranteed. So if you're like, oh, I don't know my definitions for continuous and discrete, please go look those up and make sure that you are familiar with them. Okay, let's look at the next question. You probably are gonna have to turn up the brightness for this video. Apology, I still have load shedding. So we're just gonna keep going because more important that we get through it than, than anything else. It says determine the median, right? What does median mean? It means middle, right, for test two. So the middle score. What's really nice about test two is they put an order for us. You cannot find the middle unless it's ordered, right? So let's go count firstly how many people there are. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. So there's eighteen people. Now, you need to think about whether there's an even or an odd number of data points. When there's an even number of data points, we know there's two middle values. So it's going to be 9 and 10. You could be saying, Margie, how did you get that? Well, 18 divided by 2 is 9, right? So we're going to count from here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. If you count from the other side, it's also 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So these two values here are my middle values. But you, you can't write two values for the median. Median They can only be one. So you add them together and you divide by two. Okay. So over here, we're going to say 66 plus 67 divided by two gives me 66.5. And you should put a little percent in there. Right. And that is your answer. So whenever there is an even number, right, of uh, data points, you're going to have two middle values. You divide them by two, which is effectively finding the average. And you write your answer. If it is an odd number of data points, there's just one number in the middle, and then you don't have to do any of this. So it's a bit easier when there's an odd number of data points. But they probably ask this to make sure that you actually know how to do the median when it's a little bit more complicated. Let's look at the next one. The mean score for test one. So what does mean mean? <laughs> what does mean mean? Yo, I sound like a repeating myself, yeah? It means the average, okay? The average for test one was 84%, so they've given it to us, but now they want us to backtrack and get why. These questions are questions that students historically hate, okay, because it takes a little bit of algebra. So what I want you to do is I want you to put this into your calculator, add everything together there, all of these, only for test one though, not for all tests, only for test one, add all of these, all of them, put them into your calculator. Add, 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 press equals. Obviously, don't add y because you don't know what that is. And you should get this. You should get 
plus y if you added everything up, right? That's what you should get. How many data points were there? 18. Remember, what is our average? Add everything together, divide by the number of data points. And what is our average equal? 84. Now, there is that solve function on your calculator, but I'm more interested in you actually understanding how to do this. So think about opposite operations. Because this is divided on this side, it becomes a times on that side. Okay, basic, basic algebra. Okay, 84 times 18 gives me 1512. Right, and then y, I now have this number next to y. Don't want it there. Because it's added to y, we have to subtract it off both sides. So subtract it off this side. And y didn't do so well. They got 69%. Okay. This here is definitely a more difficult question, but not an uncommon question. So practice it. Make sure you understand. It's all about understanding your definitions. Let's continue. It says, identify the candidates whose test scores in both tests differed by 30. Okay. This minus six, um, this minus this is more than 30. So we're not looking at that. Now you could be saying, Margie, but it's over 30. It's fine. But the question said specifically, differed by 30. Not more than 30. Not less than 30. 30. So be careful. This one here, more than 30. That's exactly 30. Now you could be saying, oh, Margie, I couldn't do that in my head. Well, then go do each of these um, individually on your calculator. I'm just doing it in my head, right? And you do that the whole way across. Okay, you do it the whole way across. Just remember y is 69. Cross, that's 30. No, 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 no. So the only ones that differ by 30 are Helen, right? So we have Helen. And we have Kevin. Okay, so I'm going to say Helen and Kevin. Not Kellen, I think I said Kellen, I meant Kevin. So those are my two people. You need to show a little bit of working out. So you can say 87 minus 57 equals 30. That's for my girl Helen. And then for Kevin, it was 97 minus 67, which is also 30. So you can show a little bit of working out there. Okay, oh sorry, let me show you there. So it's Helen and Kevin, a little bit of working out, done. 3.1.5. It says, calculate the value of the interquartile range. Now, interquartile range is saying my upper quartile minus my lower quartile. Now, you could be saying, oh, Margaret, I don't know what that means. Okay. Well, let's look here. We said our median is over here. That's our median. Okay. Our upper quartile is just the median of our points that are above the median, okay? So the, all these points are above the median. You could be saying, but Margie, why are you including 67? Isn't that part of the median? Well, no. The median was 66.5. That's not 67. It's not 66. It's bang in the middle. So you need to think about it, okay? So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, right, which is a Odd number, so it's quite easy. What is the middle of 9? Nine? 9 divided by 2 is 4,5. Round it up, and it gives us 5. So let's count to 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Count from the side. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So Q3, right? Q3 equals 71. Now we have to do the same thing for Q1. Q1 is the median of the points that are below the actual median. So what are the middle, the middle data point of my lower half of my, of my data set? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine divided by two is four comma five. Round it up, right, to five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So my quarter one, quartile one, sorry, is 61. So my interquartile range is just 71 minus 61, so it is 10%. Okay, so do you see how in this section it's so important that you know your definitions? If you don't know your, defini your definitions, you start running into some trouble. Two more questions for this little sub-question. 
it says express in a simplified fractional form, so we're keeping it in a fraction, the probability of randomly selecting a candidate who did not get a distinction for test A. So I'm just going to use a little bit of a different color just to see. What is the distinction? 85%. So let's start here. That's the distinction, that's the distinction. Distinction, distinction. No. No. Yes. No. Yes. No. Yes, 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 yes. No, 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 no. So I've circled all the ones where it's a no. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So 8 of the 18 people that wrote test 1 did not get a distinction. So wh wh how do we work out probability? We say the things that we want, so the people who didn't get a distinction over the people that wrote the test, right? It's 8 over 18. Simplify it because it did say here in a simplified fraction if you're like, ooh, I don't know how to do that. Put it in your calculator. Type that into your calculator. Press equals and it will give you 4 over 9. Done. Right. We have one more question and that is 3.1.7. It's a fairly easy question. It said, determine the modal test. What does modal mean? It means the most common, right? The modal, the modal test score. So the most common test score for test 1. So let's see. We have 89... Let's just look. Let's just see a number that looks like it occurs a lot. 83 occurs twice. We have 73. 73 occurs three times. Mm, nothing else occurs more than that. So our mode there, or our modal test score is 73%. Okay. So this question wasn't a difficult one, but if you don't know your stats definitions, you're going to run into a bit of trouble. Okay. So let's now see the second part of question three. 